America. My name is I'm Yosef Frimpong, and I come to you live every Friday and to help you make sense of your life. And today we're going to talk about monuments. I've been thinking about monuments a lot. I've been thinking every week, every few days, something comes up that I feel like the people need to know the insight of like all of my reading. But today we're going to talk about monuments. I wish I could do this full time, but I can't. Um, because we're screwing up how we talk about monuments, right? So there's a little bit of a confusion going on about what it means to topple a monument and what it means that these conservative monuments are being toppled. You have people on the left who are liberals and they're very excited about toppling monuments. You have people on the left who are who look at toppling monuments and they think, ah, I'd rather have good jobs for my people. You have people on the right all of them are very upset at toppling the conservative monuments. So what does this mean? That liberals um, are kind of excited or ambivalent about it, and then progressives are kind of excited and ambivalent about it, but um, conservatives are very serious that the monuments should stay because of history. What does that mean? It means that liberals, progressives, and conservatives all use monuments seriously and uh, use monuments differently. And I'm going to explain how, they're diff how they function differently in each ideology. But I just want you to know now, if you don't take anything else from this episode, that you have to think of monuments. They're kind of like uh, the conservative monuments, that, like Stone Mountain or the Confederate monuments. They're kind of like prophylactics against racial justice. You can, take, you can take them off, you can topple them, but you'll still get screwed. It's just that when you get screwed, it's possible and more likely that your assailant will catch a case of justice. I'll say this again. Think of the monuments like prophylactics against racial justice. If you topple them, you'll still get screwed, but it's more likely that your assailant if they screw you, will catch a case of justice. So it, it can't be the end game. It's, these monuments are defensive measures against their white supremacist defensive measures. So we've taken down some of their defensive measures. It doesn't mean that like we can score. It just means that their defense is a little bit weak. You could, it's like a weakened immune system. They're now less strong against racial justice, but you can live a long time with a weakened immune system. Just, I think mad, magic. This has Magic Johnson, right? Like he got HIV in 93, and uh, he's, he's doing fine. So you can live a long... He obtained HIV in 93. I was in Southern California at the time. I remember this vividly. Was it 93? Yeah, I was around there. Yeah. Um, uh, I, remember, I remember it vividly because I was just coming in from soccer practice, and then I heard Magic got AIDS. And then I saw the press conference, and anyway, um, 92, 92. What, I need, what you need to know is that these monuments are the immune system. So you take them down, you take down the immune system of white supremacy, but you haven't killed it. You've just weakened its immune system. We need to go on the offensive. So I'm going to talk a little bit about monuments, how they function in the different ideologies, and I'll do all of that after the opening. To the beach, oh. Oh, yeah. Sound good to me. Never change the ways for the world or the government. If it was the president, then I would state facts. You leave it up to me, I paint the White House black and ain't no future in your front. and i am back so in athens we just voted 
to finally remove our monument from down, our conservative monument from downtown. You remember these monuments came in not right after the Civil War, decades after, just so that the South and the white supremacists could secure the peace. They lost the war, but they want to secure the peace, and you secure the peace by getting rid of Reconstruction and then like putting in these monuments as prophylactics against racial justice. Um, so the, you know, the Ladies Memorial or the United Daughters of the Confederacy, depends on which city, they, they put in all of these monuments and taking them down is what we decided to do because, and we took them down this week because our city made a whoops a few weeks ago and tear gassed and shot a few protesters who were just hanging out, like actually just a quiet protest. And they tear gassed and shot of, of them with like bean bound rounds beanbag rounds and when you make a whoops like that you have to you have to make it right so <laughs> they decided to make it right by taking down the conservative monument the confederate monument in the middle of downtown and they're going to take down the confederate monument and instead in that walkway they're going to paint a rainbow crosswalk i feel some sort of way about the lgbt um, uh, you know, symbol taking the place of the white supremacist symbol because I need something on like in that place. If we're going to replace it with something, replace it with something that tells me that black people are going to be made whole after the you know centuries of terrorism. Whatever, I'm glad you know the LGBT community gets its crosswalk, but. That's not the same as doing racial justice. I don't confuse one thing for the other. It's a different kind of justice. I'm pro-LGBT. I just don't want that to be used as kind of a uh, prestidigitation, as a, as, a, as a sleight of hand for skirting the fact of black poverty in Athens, Georgia. So the city council um, uh, agreed to topple, uh, to remove the statue and move it to a safe place. But you have to understand, statues, and some people are very upset about this, they're taking our history. So what does that mean, they're taking our history? First of all, th that's not all of history, right? We don't have a statue of all of the, you know, the slaves that built uh, Athens, Georgia, or the South, or like, drove the economy. We don't have a... a a, a memorial there. We don't have a memorial of them like fighting back against their masters. Right? So what does that mean? We don't have a memorial of their degradation. I want in Athens a museum of white terrorism because there's some fascinating documents in the archives in Athens. We still have all the archives from the Ku Klux Klan uh, because when they were burning papers they forgot to burn like a box of them. So we still have a box of archives from the Ku Klux Klan and their meetings. I, I would like to go through that. And I, I think uh, there was a Freedmen's Bureau, a reconstruction office based in Athens with letters from slaves saying, please don't leave, please don't leave, please don't leave. If you leave, these psychopaths are going to terrorize them, terrorize us. And then what happened? Of course, the union officers left and, you know, black Athens has been terrorized ever since. So I would like all of those documents. I would like all of those documents in in public record, uh, memorialized in a museum, a museum of white terrorism, curated by moi. I think it'd be wonderful and educational, and it would be history. It would be history. I just wouldn't pick and choose the same people that the white supremacists pick and choose, right? So. You have to understand monuments as symbols underdetermine their meaning. That's what it is to be a symbol. Your meaning doesn't quite come through with a quality of determinacy um, in the sensuous form, right? So it does, it's not what it appears to be. Any work of art is, that is exactly what it appears to be um, and doesn't take any kind of thinking to figure out what is this or what's going on. Uh, any person who is exactly what they appear to be, that means they're not deep, right? So what art is trying to figure out how to do, since it doesn't have like the depth that like a person interacting can do, art's trying to figure out how to put meaning, not just, you know, 
not just like tactile appearance of this immediate appearance, but actual meaning in sensuous form. And it's hard to do, right? And symbols are notoriously bad at it because they can't figure it out. Like, what does it mean that God came in the form of a burning bush? Like, how did, what is it he, like the, the, the burning bush talk with mouth? So symbols are bad, and what is it that God for God to have a particular form? So symbols are notoriously bad at actually um, expressing the meaning that that you know can be interpreted in them. Later on, it gets better, but symbol, the symbolic art, the symbolic form of art, rather than the classical or romantic form of art, symbolic forms of art are, are, are very bad because you can always misinterpret. Does a lion mean courage or does a lion mean I'm going to eat you? Because lions can be both courageous and like hungry. I don't know. So does a lion mean kingship? So the symbols underdetermine what they mean. But I can tell you one thing. There's going to be a, a, a difference between an abstract symbol and a functional symbol like these, uh, like a functional monument, an abstract monument and a functional monument like the monument was downtown in Athens. A functional monument is going to function not necessarily as a piece of art, but as a cultural artifact that produces part of the culture, right? So we need black people to know their place. We need white people to assume their place. And the way we do that is by having a big old phallus downtown um, recognizing the people who like killed for in order to sustain slavery. Right. So that's what's at stake for the conservatives. So for the conservatives say that this is actually a, a, a salvo against our way of life, they're right. they're right. But I'm honest, I want to destroy the conservative way of life. I want to go out their families, I want to go out their churches, and I want to go out their schools. Because you have to understand, the conservatives have won the culture war. They've won the culture war so much that when liberals like hold themselves up, as, as, or progressives hold themselves up as uh, the more cultured people, it's only because our culture stands out. Because conservatives have just taken over. American culture is so conservative that it doesn't, like we've taken something like racial justice, racial injustice, as a, a fact of nature, not something that was contested. We're now understanding that it was contested and can be recontested, which is awesome. Uh, but when conservatives see this as an attack against their culture, I'm saying, yes, their culture, we're attacking their culture. It's like a weak attack. We're attacking the defense they have for their culture, right? So I want to replace these white churches and Protestant churches with liberation theology churches. Liberation theology is fantastic. There's a great book called um, The Cross and the Lynching Tree by James Cone. Read it. And you still get your Jesus. You still get your church. You just don't get your white supremacy. And you get church as an organ of liberation from you know, current injustices, which I appreciate in the church, right? So you could, I want to go after these white churches, transform them into liberation theology churches. I want to go after white families. I want to transform them into like <laughs> these horrible places where people hold each other hostage, um, uh, uh, out of, like hold each other hostage out of worrying about each other's feelings in these bizarre ways to like actually healthy places. Because here's the deal, you can't put on a racial justice culture with, you can't put on racial justice policies and even social policies if the church and the family is still regressive and white supremacist. I'll say this again, you can't just have racial justice from the top down if the families and the uh, churches are still like, functionally white supremacist. It, it, what will happen is it'll, the body will reject your racial justice. It'll reject it like an organ that doesn't have the right blood type. The body will reject it. So if you're actually serious about racial justice, you have to prepare the, fam, the families for it and you have to prepare the churches for it. There's a reason why the Moynihan Report um, came out in the 70s, went right after the black family. It was giving white people the ammunition to attack the black family so that, uh, you know, white supremacy will rule. 
right? So we need a Moynihan report for the white family, but we need to go after the cultural artifacts that support white supremacist, you know, that naturalize and normalize white supremacist policies. So we need to go after the white church that normalizes white supremacy. We need to go after the white school that leaves out the facts of white terrorism and the facts that like a lot of your grandparents were not very good people. And, and you have a debt to pay because institutions don't die like people do. They, they live on, right? So as long as there's an America, then that means the people who are Americans can pay America's debt. And America's debt goes to black people. So we need to understand that the monument is actually functioning in and white supremacist culture in a way that liberal monuments don't, right? Let's say you put a statue of Barack Obama, six feet tall. You put a statue of Barack Obama in a black neighborhood. What does that mean? It means he was black. It doesn't mean you know how to now be president. It doesn't mean anything about what Obama did as president. It doesn't mean anything about wielding power. It means that he was black. It's an immediate abstract symbol that has no content. Whereas the conservative, the Confederate monument, Stone Mountain, and the rest of them, they have content. You have not just white people, you have white generals who are fighting and dying to preserve slavery and the subordination of black people, who are a third of Georgia right now. A third of Georgia. Right? So that monument has content. That monument is a concrete monument that functions as like a cultural artifact. A six-foot-tall statue of Barack Obama tells you nothing. Tells you nothing. A a six-foot-tall statue of Robert E. Lee tells you what he did as a general. Like, what he fought for and why he's there. And a six-foot-tall statue of, of Barack Obama tells you nothing about what Obama did as president and what it means to wield power. The... Statue of the general does tell you what it means to wield power. It means to wield power against uh, racial justice. So do you see the asymmetry with which liberals view their abstract symbols and where conservatives use theirs in order to keep the functioning organism that is their culture and American culture, right? So when you see Nancy Pelosi like ripping up Trump's speeches or um, I don't know, putting on kente cloth, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't actually it doesn't actually function as a resistance. It's just an abstract symbol. But when you see these conservative monuments, they actually mean something because their specific like function is to remind black people of their place and to embolden uh, you know, white people as you know, instead of kente cloth, I want to mind it of Nancy Pelosi. If you're going to just culturally appropriate, appropriate something, I want to see like a black power fist. Now, what happens when Nancy Pelosi puts on, a black, puts, up a, puts on a glove and puts a black power fist? That's American. Kente cloth isn't American. Kente cloth is Ghanaian. I know because I'm Ghanaian. My dad's Ghanaian. So what happens if, like, if you're going to culturally appropriate American culture, then... I want to see Nancy Pelosi. I wouldn't mind seeing Nancy Pelosi putting a fist up and then like backing that up with legislation because that actually means something. Possibly. You know, you could screw up with that too, but that would actually, that would be a more substantive fight. If you're going to do, if you're going to take down a conservative monument, you need to replace it with a black fighter. A black person, like you need to replace it with a, with are you gonna, I'll even give you a white fighter. You can replace it with a John Brown monument. But you replace it with a Nat Turner monument. You replace it with a black fighter and not just, um, well, not a rainbow crosswalk, but not just a symbol. So when you put a picture of uh, a bust of Barack Obama, that's not a symbol of black fight. That's a symbol of black faces in high places who actually... It might be a symbol of white pacifism insofar as Black Obama was a black face in in a high place who pointedly did very little um, for black people and was very honest about there is no black America, there is no white America. So 
you have to understand that for conservatives, these monuments actually function in the culture, our normalized culture of white supremacy. For liberals, our kind of symbols don't mean anything because we're not in the culture game. We've seeded churches, we've seeded schools, and we've seeded family structures and norms within the family to white people. Now, you can, uh, to uh, white conservatives. Now, you could say, well, you can just get rid of the conservative content in the church, and you can get rid of the conservative content in the schools, and you can get rid of the conservative content in the family. But if you replace it like liberals do, that means with nothing, you just get vacuous churches. Liberal churches are the most boring place in the world. You get vacuous churches, you get vacuous um, uh, school experiences, and you get vacuous uh, family lives where people just, you get, you get no-fault divorce. Like, so you need to actually not just um, destroy kind of the white supremacy in these institutions, in these cultural institutions. You need to replace them with content. You need to replace them with liberal liberation theology. You need to replace them with an articulated conception of a just family. Um, and you need to articulate and you need to replace them with an articulated conception of history and the injustices America has gone through in order to sustain our history and how we've progressed through those injustices and the notion that history is not over. Right? So... You can't just, you, well, a few things. You can't just put like progressive policy from the top down, racial justice policy from the top down, and expect that to take unless the culture has been prepared for it. So the work now, and the work I think I do with these videos is to prepare the culture. I do it for the culture. I, I do it to prepare the culture, and you do it to prepare the culture for um, political and social justice because the top down approach doesn't work. And, um, and you can't just take out the monuments. You need to replace them with other like, meaning-making artifacts that support a justice culture. Hope this has been thoughtful, and I hope you um, see that. I mean, the right knows this. There's a reason why you don't get a, uh, um, a, a monument to Fred Hampton. And there should be a monument to Fred Hampton, like everywhere. Fred Hampton's fantastic. There's a reason why you don't get that monument. We'll get a movie, but we'll see how that does. Uh, but we should get a monument. One of our greater Americans. And one of our sadder stories insofar as the, the government killed him. They had him assassinated. So thank you for, our time. Thank you for your time. Uh, I hope this has clarified the fight. I hope this has clarified the asymmetry between the way conservatives use uh, monuments as like a substantive uh, functional part of the cultural system and the way liberals use monuments as just kind of an abstract, um, you know, an abstract piece of art, right? So the six foot tall, the, the Obama bust is not going to substitute for culture in the same way that the uh, monument for the Confederate soldiers actually did function, function and did do work as a cultural artifact. Thank you for your time, and I will see you next week. Peace. Gone. <laughs> and I want to be a free Negro. So um, if you like what I do, go to funkyacademic.com and contribute. Thanks often comes in the form of cash and the site takes credit cards. If you appreciate the work I do every week and you think that I should continue to do it because I'm giving you the quality of political knowledge and insight that will help you not squander your life and kind of rescue